Hi, I'm Sev Maneshian, Certified Financial Planner Practitioner and the founder of Pro Exam Tutors. In this video, I'm going to share with you a number of tips and strategies that you can implement so you can successfully navigate the case study portion of your exam. The case study part of the exam understandably gives exam candidates a lot of anxiety. I, for one, just did not want anything to do with them when I was preparing for the exam. But in the end, the case studies are fundamentally no different than the standard one-off questions you'll be answering. As far as the format and number of questions are concerned, case studies are split or are on a split screen where you have the narrative and the case facts on one side and the questions on the other. If you're taking the exam remotely, the formatting on your computer may not automatically default to a split screen, but there should be a way that you can change that so you're not stuck flipping back and forth between the case and the questions. Regarding the number of case studies and the questions attached to them, this of course is gonna depend on the exam that you're given. For example, and nobody will know for sure, but you could have an exam that has two large case studies and one or two smaller cases. The person sitting right next to you could only have one large case study and four or five smaller ones. There's just no way to tell but I plan on seeing two large cases, one for each half of the exam. The number of questions you'll be tasked with answering will depend on your exam as well, but on a large case study, you can typically expect to get 10 to 20 questions, and on smaller cases, about two to six. As far as how to tackle the case studies, the first thing I would do is jump right into the footnotes. This was something that I was taught to do when I was going through the curriculum, and it's actually a habit that I still practice today, to today uh, in my financial planning practice. Now, I suggest reviewing the footnotes right away for a couple of reasons. First, by reviewing the footnotes, you'll naturally settle yourself down and then settle into the questions. Second, the footnotes give you an excellent idea of the type of information that you'll likely need to seek out to answer some or even most of the questions. In fact, this will help you to anticipate what you'll be asked. The second thing I do is a scan of the narrative. And you can do this at a medium to somewhat quick pace. I'd avoid reading the entire narrative word for word. That's just going to take up too much time. Uh, but doing this will further give you an idea of the types of questions that will be asked. And you can take notes on key information along the way. For example, if the main subjects of the case are a married couple in their mid-50s, let's say, they've come to you seeking your help with retirement in the next five years, you can probably expect questions like IRA distributions, uh, gifting strategies, calculations regarding an annuity exclusion ratio, and calculating retirement income. You might also be given clues about the right amount of insurance needed whether it's life, long-term care, or property and casualty insurance. While there's no way for me to know, I would suspect that questions about insurance coverage and estate planning documents would have you focus on deficiencies in those areas. While you're doing a scan of the narrative, keep in mind that you have a highlight and strikeout feature. So I'd highlight key things like age, goals, concerns, and the tax bracket that the subjects are in, among other vital information. Now, from what I understand, there is no search function for you to quickly zero in on information, but you might just want to give it a try. Try using the control F function just in case it's made available. Who knows? Worth giving it a shot. The next thing I would do is I would scan the questions being asked because after reviewing the footnotes and the narrative, you might actually be able to outright answer a question or two or even more just based on those key facts. I'd also make notes about what the question is looking for. So for example, if a question is asking what the tax consequences will be of selling a recently inherited IRA, you'll know to look for that piece of data and then apply your understanding of income in respect of a decedent or pro rata taxation where the IRA owner has made pre-tax and after-tax contributions. As I mentioned before, the case studies can appear to be daunting, uh, but the questions you'll be asked are fundamentally 
no different than the one-offs throughout the rest of the exam. You just need to be laser focused on what is being asked and where to find it. The information, of course, is all there for you. Now, as far as how to approach the case from a timing perspective, you'll want to spend no more than seven to eight minutes reading the footnotes, the narrative, and reviewing the income statement and balance sheet. If you get, let's say, 10 questions on a large case study, and the exam will tell you how many questions to expect, they'll say something, for example, you know, questions, uh, God forbid, you know, one through 15 right out of the gates are going to be case study questions. Uh, but let's say if it's, you know, if it's 10 questions, that means that you're going to have 20 minutes to answer those questions, or you should pace yourself to answer those 10 questions over a 20-minute period. Okay, so the entire case study on a typical case study should take you no more than a half hour. If you're worried that you'll run out of time, you can alter this approach of reading the footnotes first and scanning the narrative, and you can just skip directly to the questions. And without reading the questions, just mark any answer. But you've got to make sure that you mark that question for review. Once you've blindly answered the case study questions and finished answering the regular one-off questions, you can go back to those case study questions. At this point, you may want to read each question, uh, take notes on what you're looking for, then read the footnotes and the narrative to pick out the information that you need. It's even possible that you might get a question or two that doesn't even depend on the facts in the case, but there's no way to be certain of this. Once you've answered all the questions that you had confidence in addressing correctly, now you can go back and reread the case material. Having already read the question, you'll probably be really focused on what information that you need. Just be careful not to get sucked into one question, though. If after a few minutes you just can't find what you're looking for, it's best to try to narrow down your answer between what you think are the best two choices. Pick one and move on. This strategy can also be applied to your regular non-case study questions. Now that I've covered how to tackle the case studies, let's talk about how to prepare for them because the more prepared that you are, the higher is the likelihood that you'll be able to get most of the questions correct. Remember that you're aiming to get at least 70% of the case study questions answered correctly. And to do this, you'll want to go through about one case study a week, starting about two to three months out from your exam date. When you do a case study review session, give yourself just under 30 minutes if you have around 10 questions. And also remember that you're looking at about seven to eight minutes to review the material and about two minutes to answer each question. Now, some questions may take you only a minute, while others might take you know three or four minutes. It just depends on the question. But Regardless, as you train for the case study portion of the exam, you'll want to mimic the timing. So use the timer function on your phone. But when you first start training on case studies, it's okay to take a more uh, leisurely pace, even having the answers in front of you so you can get accustomed to uh, what type of information that you're looking for. Preparing for case studies two to three months before your exam may seem excessive and would appear that you're devoting too much time to them, but working on case studies only strengthens the overall knowledge that you'll need to answer the regular one-off questions. It actually forces you to really understand topics such as IRAs, grats and grots, life insurance, social security, and so on. And yes, it's seemingly too time-consuming, but studying case studies forces you out of the comfort zone of answering quiz bank questions and then forces you to go back to your books and videos. It also slows your pace, which gives your mind more time to absorb the vast amount of information that you need to know. And as you know, there is a ton of information that you have to absorb uh, over, your, uh, over your study period. Finally, when it comes to case studies, be sure that you expect the unexpected. In other words, it's entirely possible to get hit with a case study right off the bat. And that case study could ask 10 to 20 questions, or 
you could get to the end of a segment on the exam and then get hit there as well. So you don't want to, you just don't know where or when they'll pop up and how many there will be. So that's why it's important that you maintain a steady, roughly two minutes per question pace throughout the entire exam and that you've put in the long hours of preparation. Okay, so in summary, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna start training on cases about two to three months before the exam. At first with the answers and explanation in front of you, and then later on in a way that mimics the exam. In other words, without the answers and explanations in front of you. You'll wanna use the highlight and strikeout functions. Scan the footnotes first, then the narrative, briefly review the balance sheet and cash flow statement, look for deficiencies in areas such as insurance, estate planning documents, savings, and so on. Um, and also keep track of your time. So that means seven to eight minutes to review the items I just mentioned and taking about two minutes per question. You can either dive into the case study questions when they show up, or you can blindly answer the questions Remember to mark them for review and then handle them in the final 20, 30 minutes of your three-hour session. Anyway, I hope you found these tips to be helpful, and I wish you luck on passing the CFP exam. Thank you.